Hey folks, Sam here at NA Studios. Thanks for checking the video out. If you've seen my channel before, you'll know that typically I concentrate on mixing, mastering, how to make a track sound great after it's been recorded. And that's all fine, but there's no great master if there's no great mix, no great mix if there's no great song, no great song without a great arrangement. And that's what I wanna take a look at today. I wanna to take a look at taking an idea, a basic idea, a sketch, a chord structure, and making it a bit more interesting, a bit more musically exciting. It's not gonna be doing anything too in depth, it's just adding and changing things in a very slight way that makes it a bit more interesting. So I've got a sequence here, which is essentially just four chords over the top of the beat. We're gonna change these chords up slightly, we're gonna put a bass line in, and make the whole thing just a little more, a little more musically interesting. Take a listen to how it sounds now, and then we're gonna dive in. So there's nothing really wrong with this. It sounds fine, it sounds pleasant, but it's not very interesting. It's a bit kind of block chords, a bit substandard. It's me playing keyboard and not being the best keyboard player in the world. And through our DAW, we can really add some excitement to this. So let's just take a look at this MIDI track on the keys, see what I'm doing so far. So here are my notes and you'll see at the top here, if I select my chord, it'll tell me what chord I've played. So I've played an F to start off with, followed by a C, followed by a D minor, followed by another C. Okay, so it sounds fine, but let's just jump in a little more and see if we can add a bit of interest to this. First off, we're going to create a bit more homogeny from these chords. So at the moment, they're kind of moving around the keyboard a bit. The F here is, is in this octave and the C is kind of moving around. We're gonna create a bit more of a, of a commonality, a common vein running through them. And we're gonna do that by using an inverted chord. After that, we're going to add some notes on the top, some sevens, some nines, and then we're gonna take a look at a bass line. Just with these simple ideas, we can really bring this idea to life. So first of all, what strikes me here is that we've got uh, an F, an A, and a C. So this is an F major triad. So just the three notes in an F major chord, F, A, C. And then we go to C, E, and G. Well, what occurs to me is that we have this same C in the F, at the top of the F chord, and at the bottom of the C chord. It would make far more sense if we put this C at the top here. So let's just do that. If I just select it, I can move it up an octave. Let's take a listen to these two now. There'll be a bit more of a feeling of, of home, of homogeny between the two of them because I'm not moving around the keyboard quite so much. Take a listen to it before and then take a listen to it now that we've moved that around. Just one simple change can make a big difference. It's a small change, but it's just making it so that this C is just staying up there and it's creating a common thread throughout the chords. And that's very important. That's something that we're gonna come on to again in a moment. So one simple change there, and it's created a little more of a feeling of home. So let's try and experiment and make these chords a little more exciting. Let's go to this F major chord. It sounds fine, but I think I want a little more, a little more sparkle in it, a little more something interesting as the first chord of the song. So what I'm gonna do here is add a major seven on the top. So I'm gonna do this by just copying this up to the F above. So I've essentially just created an octave in that. I've got F, A, C, and then F above it as well. And just bring that one down a semitone. So I've now got an F major seven chord. So this is F, A, C, and then an E on top. Just take a listen to this chord on its own and you'll hear how it's just, it's just a bit brighter. Okay, and then without the E on top, and then with it again. Just adds a little sparkle, a little bit of something on top, makes it a little bit more musically interesting. So that sounds good, but I think the rest of the chords are sounding a little dull in comparison. So I'm gonna move on to the next chord, and this is my C major chord. Now I've already added a little bit of interest to this by adding the C on the top instead of on the bottom. So we've now got E on the bottom, followed by G, followed by the C at the top. It's still a C major chord, it's just in a slightly different formation, an inversion, if you will. So what I'd quite like to do here is add a ninth on the top. So if we have our major triad, we've got C, E, and G. Well, the octave of that would be the C on top again. So octave meaning eight. So if we go one note above that, 
in the scale, then we go from C up to D. So the C is the octave, the eight oct, and then the D is the nine. So we're actually making this an added nine chord. So again, I'm just gonna copy this C and I'm gonna bring it up to a D. So you hear this chord, again, it's got a little bit of more, a little bit more movement, a little bit more motion, a little bit more interest than just the standard C chord. So here it is now with the added nine on the top. It sounds a little more subdued, a little bit more interesting. But take a listen to it alongside the F major 7. So we're now, instead of just going from F to C, we're going F major 7 to C added 9. Okay, now we're starting to, to create a song. Now we're starting to create something that sounds a little bit more interesting. Let's take a listen to it before, where it was just F and C kind of block chords, and how it sounds now. Okay, we're starting to create something a bit interesting there. Let's move on to the third chord. Now we've got a D minor chord here. So this is just D, F, and A. What I'd like to do here is add a seventh on top again, but a different kind of seventh. We're not gonna add the major seventh because we've not got a major chord. We're going to add the minor seventh. So in the same way as we did before, we're just going to add the octave above. So this would be on the D. Let's just create another D up there. Then instead of coming down one semitone, we're going to come down two semitones, so a full tone. So we've got a C there. So if I take away that octave now, that creates a D minor seven chord. So take a listen to that now, how it sounds compared to how it sounded before. So this is D minor seven. Instead of, so with that minor seven, just again adds a little bit of interest. Let's take a listen to those three chords all together. So now because we've got some interest in those first three chords, the final chord, the just block C, doesn't sound so uninteresting anymore. It kind of feels like home. It feels like because the other chords are now quite interesting, this one doesn't have to be as interesting. So there's no light without shade. Just because you've created interest in three of the chords in the sequence, it doesn't mean you have to add interest to the fourth one because that's where your, your home lies. That's where your, your feeling of simplicity is. So we've added a bit of interest to three. So the fourth one can now remain the same. So what we've actually done here by creating these notes, we've gone E, to D, to C. We've created a descending, almost descant, almost top line on the top. So instead of just having the block chords that were kind of floating around the keyboard, we've created a feeling of homogeny, a feeling of a journey between those notes. We've gone from the E to the D to the C. And you can really hear that. If you listen to those chords, you can hear that descending line on the top. just adds a little bit of interest. We're making it a bit more of a journey as opposed to just four chords that, that made sense but didn't really tell much of a story. So we've got that sorted now. I'm now gonna move on to the next bit which is my bass line. And it's the bass line in the keyboard part because I'm actually gonna change the overall bass line after this. But what I'd really like to do is if we just take a look at these bass notes I've got here at the moment, they're just the root notes of the chord. So F, C, D, C. Well, it occurs to me that if we've got this descending top line up here, then we could have a descending bass line as well. And that might add just a bit more of a feeling of home, a bit more of a feeling of interest. So if we take that C major chord, that C, E and G, we've got the C in the bass here. Let's move that up to an E. And already you can see this movement that's going down. Instead of it just being up, down, up a little bit, down again, we're creating a bit more movement. So. The E in the bass isn't wrong. It's just the major third of the chord. With those notes, C, E, and G, you can use any of those notes in the bass. You can use whatever you want in the bass, as long as it sounds right, as long as it sounds like what you're trying to, to create, as long as it reads your intention. So by having that major third in the bass, it just completes this journey. Instead of having up, down, up, down, it just makes it so that we're going up, down, down, down. So let's listen to that all in one go. Let's listen to the chords that we've now created a bit more interest for, and then that descending bass line as well. And the whole thing is just gonna feel a little bit more like, like one unit. 
After that, you're going to hear the, the same chords as we had in the initial sequence. So first off, you're going to hear the more interesting chords. And then after that, those next four bars are going to be what we had in the first place. So you're going to hear the difference between the two. So the first four bars are the interesting ones, if you want. And the second four bars are going to be what we had originally. So you're going to hear the difference. I think there's a lot more interest there. I think it tells far more of a story. It feels like more of a journey. And to me, that's what this song needs to be. We've got some relatively uninteresting chords that we've made interesting, and they now sound a hundred times better. But they can always be a little bit better. So let's move on to our bass line. So what I'm gonna do here is just take these notes that I've got, copy them, and then on my bass region, just create essentially a copy of those notes into this region here, I'll take solo off. So I've just copied those notes into this region. I've just got a, a pretty standard bass sound in here. It's nothing, nothing groundbreaking. Let's just uh, scroll up and just take a listen to this bass on its own. Pretty disinteresting. So let's play around with the notes that are actually in this chord. So first off, we've gone for the F chord. And then we've got the C chord with the E in the bass. Then we've got the D minor chord and then the C. Let's just play around with this a little bit. So I think instead of having an F to start off with, we've got three choices there. We can either have an F, an A or a C. We've started off bright with the F major seven chord. So let's go up. Let's have the major third in the bass. So instead of this being an F, let's bring this up to an A. And then we're going to have the F as the second note. Similarly, we can use any note we want with these two chords. So we've got a C added nine chord there. So we've got C, E, G, and a D. Let's go for a G to start off with. There's no real set rules that I'm following here. I'm just taking into account the notes of the chord and then saying, let's use that one. And then because we're in that C major chord, let's leave that one as an E, so the major third. The next one, let's move this up to D minor. Let's go to an A. So this is the fifth of D minor. You've got D, F, and A. Why not? And then we're still on that D minor chord. It's a minor chord, so let's use the minor third. So D, F, and A. F is the minor third there. Let's move this up to the minor third. And then we've got the C chord here again. Well, I kind of want to leave the bottom note as the final note, the C. So we've got C, E, and G to choose from. Let's go up to G. So that may have seemed a little bit random, and that's exactly what it was. I wasn't even listening to this as we go along. I'm just choosing some notes that are in those chords that I think are going to fit. If it fits the kind of journey of the chord progression, then it's great. If I want to change those as we go along, then it's MIDI, I can just change them. Let's take a listen to just the bass line on its own though, and see if this feels like it's kind of creating some movement. And then we'll listen to it with the chords and see if it all fits. Okay, nothing untoward there, nothing that sounds kind of out of the ordinary. Let's try this in with absolutely everything and see how it sounds. So we've currently got the chords at the top, then we've got the bass line and we've got the beat there as well. So let's just create our loop and let's go around those four bars and just take a listen to how it sounds. I like it, I think it's far more musically interesting. If we take a listen to how it sounded in the first instance with just our normal block chords along with the beat, you'll hear that contrast, you'll hear how it sounds far sparser. So let's take a listen to the one that we've got now with the bass line and the more interesting chords, and then after that, the following four bars will be how it sounded before, and I think you're gonna hear a big difference. So we've not changed anything fundamental about that track. We've retained essentially the same chords. We've not changed anything critical about the chords. We've just added to them. So by taking a major chord and adding a major seven on the top, we're adding a bit of brightness, a bit of sparkle. 
So we're taking that octave in the case of F major, we were just taking the F above and bringing it down by one semitone. So adding an E on the top. So that's a major seven chord. And then with the D minor chord, we were taking the D minor triad, D, F and A. We were taking that D, adding it up an octave and bringing it down two semitones, so a full tone. So that is our minor seven chords. So we had a C in there as well. And the added nine chord, we're just adding the ninth on the top. So the ninth is the octave above, so that's the same C, just the octave above, and then going up two semitones, a full tone above that. So by using seven chords, major and minor, and those added nine chords, we're creating a bit more of a journey, and that's added to by the bass, by having that descending bass line, and then the actual bass, not the keyboard bass, the actual synth bass, just creating a bit of up and down and up and down, a little bit of movement. It adds to the whole journey of the piece and it creates something that is far greater than just your standard block chords. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you can include this in the productions that you're creating. Remember what I said at the beginning, there's no great master without greatness all the way along. You can't expect to have a fantastic master if you don't have a fantastic arrangement in the first place. And being aware of small things like this, creating interesting chords, creating more of a journey through the bass line and through the top line, that's how you create that first piece of the puzzle, which then can create a great song, which creates a great mix, which ultimately ends up with a great master. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.